All right, so we have some stuff to cover. So let me let me stop the music for a second. <laughs> oh yeah, that's not cool. That's not cool. All right, we're gonna cover we're gonna cover a little bit of stuff first before uh, before before the arena. So let's move on. We have an article here. I put this right in the center. So we have an article. Nakamura and Dubov get Grand Prix wild card. Hikaru Nakamura and Daniil Dubov have been given wild cards to the 24-player FIDE Grand Prix series. The three tournaments in Berlin and Belgrade from February to April 2022 will decide the final two places in the next candidates tournament. Nakamura, who would currently be the 10th seed, was ineligible to qualify by rating after failing to play a classical game in two years, but was given a lifeline by the FIDE president. Okay, that's an interesting way of putting it. Um, fair enough. Uh, typical. The organizers picked Magnus Carlsen second, Dubov, who was just outside of the rating qualifiers. All right, so, so here we go. The FIDE Canada's tournament planned for mid-2022 has the potential to be even more important than usual. The eight-player event decides the next World Championship qualifier, but if Magnus Carlsen really did decide not to play a sixth match for the title, then the top two players in the candidates would play the match, assuming the match regulations stay as they were this time round. Currently qualified are Jan Nepomniachtchi, 21-21 runner-up, Timur Rajabov, wildcard after deciding not to play in 2020, Jan Christos Duda and Sergei Karyakin from the World Cup, and Ali Reza Faruja and Fabiana Caruana from the Grand Swiss. The final two places in the tournament will be determined by the FIDE Grand Prix, which is open to 24 players. Each of the players will compete in two of three 16-player tournaments taking place from February to April 2022. Originally, they were all supposed to be played in the same city, Berlin, Germany. But some behind-the-scenes chess politics led to one of the events being held in Belgrade, Serbia. Okay, interesting. Uh, I'm not sure that I understand that, but fair enough. All right. Each tournament starts with the players split into four groups of four players who play each other twice. Then the winners of the groups go forward to semifinals and ultimately a final, with points awarded based on where players finish. There's also a $150,000 Euro prize fund for, for each event. More details here. Um, the competition is guaranteed to be tough, with world number three, Ding Loren, heading the fight for two candidate spots. Ding would have been ineligible to qualify by rating since he hadn't played nine games in 2021 or taken part in the FIDE World Cup, but a recent four-game match against Lu Shanglei fixed that issue. All right. In the end, there were 11 rating qualifiers, five World Cup quarterfinalists, six players from the Grand Swiss, and two wild cards. So all pretty standard. Um, you have a pretty normal list. I guess currently I'm number 10. Um, and everybody else, uh, okay, Bacro from the World Cup, Amin from the World Cup are, are the two bottom seeds. But very strong field. Very, very strong field. Wesley is playing. Levon is playing. Lenny is playing. I'm playing. And Sam Shankle is playing. So basically, one-fourth of the field uh, is, is, is Americans. You have five Americans out of 24 players. Very nice. Very, very nice. Um, very good. All right, so let's keep going. The criteria were, were clear, except when it came to the wild cards. Two were named, one by FIDE President Arkady Dvorkovic and one by the organizers World Chess, formerly Aegon. All right, uh, so first things first, look at this picture of me. Do I look better or worse in this picture? Do I look, do I look better or worse? The, the real question, because this is from 2016. This is from five years ago, I think. Um, or wait, no, wait, when is it? Wait, no, this is not from 2016. This is from... Uh, Wait, when is this from? No, this 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 might be uh, Riga Latvia. Sorry, this is 20, 2018. I look better. I look much better. Okay, okay, fair enough. Okay, cool. All right, let's keep going. Hikaru Nagamura's chance of playing the 22 Grand Grand or 2022 Canis tournament looked to have gone when he pulled out of a planned appearance in the Grand Swiss in Riga. All right, there's a tweet. Um, not only did, did that mean he couldn't qualify via the Grand Swiss, it also left him not having played the required nine games to be able to qualify by rating for the Grand Prix. In fact, he hadn't played a rated classical game in over two, two years, so he dropped off the official FIDE rating list that shows only active players. Arkady Dvorkovic explained his pick of Hikaru Nakamura. Travel restrictions affecting the U.S. player and his activity as one of the most popular streamers in the world prevented him from taking part in key events. That is true. Nevertheless, he remains very active in online tournaments where he consistently shows he is in the top shape and among the best in the world. Very strong experience and popular among the fans. I believe he deserves a chance to fight. The chess community will be delighted to see him sitting at the chessboard again. Again, 
what I would say is that's very accurate. I, I feel like a lot of people, they make some assumptions that I just don't like, I just don't want to play chess or something. But if I didn't want to play chess, I would just stream Arena Kings and, and all these other tournaments and not actually play in the Magnus Tour or play the Speed Chess Championship or anything with the big dogs. So um, that is very true. And I think people who try to spin that into some other some other um, view or thinking that I just like, I just don't want to play chess or, or out of their mind. That's all that I will say. Okay. I somewhat glossed over the fact that Ikaru could have played a single cup of the U.S. Chess Championship in St. Louis without leaving the U.S., but Ikaru would put all his eggs in the Grand Swiss basket. Okay, first of all, I'm going to clarify this. When they talk about the single cup of the U.S. Championship, this is being disingenuous for the following reasons. My intention initially was to play in the U.S. Championship, but then the U.S. Championship and the Grand Swiss were separated by two days. So once, the, once uh, the U.S. Championship, which I had originally intended to play, put their dates out, I was like, okay, I'm going to play. And then the Grand Swiss released their dates a few days later. So when the Grand Swiss released their dates a few, a few days later, I'm like, okay, well, I have the choice. Do I play the U.S. Championship or do I play the Grand Swiss? So I decided to withdraw from the U.S. Championship in order to play in the Grand Swiss. And then, of course, as we know, the whole situation in Latvia spun completely out of control. So this is being a little bit, this is, again, Chess24 showing their biases and not doing uh, fair reporting. So, um, so I will say that. Nevertheless, it's hard to disagree that Hikaru will be an ass at the Grand Prix. He also has some history having qualified for the 2016 candidates via the Grand Prix alongside Fabiano Caruana. Okay, so here we go. Daniil Dubov, organizer's nominee. At a time when the fear was that Daniil's Duba, Daniil Dubov's position on Team Magnus might restrict his chances to play for the Russian team, his position in the limelight has actually helped him to bag the last remaining wild card. World Chess gave a list of bullet points for picking the 25-year-old Russian. Dubov is one of the top players and is at the top of the rating list among those who do not qualify for the series. Fans and chess players alike appreciate Daniil in the top events, such as the Grand Prix, for his inventive play and clear fighting spirit. After working with Magnus Carlsen's team, Dubov usually appears at the top of his game. Following his last session with the world champion, Dubov won the World Rapid Championship, and we hope the trend continues. Despite not yet reaching the top 10, Dubov is one of those players who receives substantial media coverage, which is in line with the World Chess mission, to bring more attention to the sport and the FIDE Grand Prix series. All right. Um, as with Hikaru, it's hard to argue with Dubov's pick, though in an ideal world, 17-year-old Vincent Kamer might be joined by some other young players. 19-year-old Andrei Asipenko, for instance, just missed out by rating. The World Cup taking Magnus Carlsen to Blitz in a match that would have given him a spot and in the Grand Swiss. In any case, the competition is set to be ferocious with all the players in the last chance Saloon if they want to have a chance to become world champion in 2023. Meanwhile, we don't need to wait long to see Nakamura and Dubov in action with both players signed with playing the World Rapid and Blitz Championship starting in Warsaw, uh, starting in Warsaw December 26th. Nakamura is currently seated second behind Carlson for both the Rapid and Blitz with 2018 Rapid champion Dubov 13th Rapid and 14th seed Blitz. Okay, so now we have a tweet. Now we go down. We have Sergey Qual Sergey Karyakin qualified to the Canada's term by reaching the final of the FIDE World Cup, but his wife Galia has now hit out at FIDE and World Chess over the decision not to give a wild card to Andrei Esipenko. Okay, so we have this tweet. It's in Russian. I assume there's a translation. Here we go. Um, her post can be translated about the Grand Prix. I can't stay silent when it's about qualification of the World Championship and they make that qualification into a clown show, it's not sport. That's my opinion. There are a lot of arguments when Magnus Carlsen, by participating in the World Cup, influenced the lineup of the Canada's tournament, knocking out one of the world's strongest players, Andrei Asipenko. There's no logic in that. Don't even look for it. The world champion shouldn't play in a tournament, which is a qualifier to him, or in that case, he should lose his right to participate in the match, as happens if you qualify to the candidates via the World Cup, but want to play in the Grand Prix as well. Playing in the Grand Prix, you simply lose your spot, which you won in the World Cup, and you start playing from scratch. All right, first thing I'm going to say is I actually agree with the sentiment. For a long time now, I've said the same thing where I felt that Magnus should not have been allowed to play in the Grand Swiss in 2019, and he should not be allowed to play in the World Cup the last couple of times. And I think that's completely spot on um, in terms of what's being said here. If you're already qualified, you should not be allowed to play in a tournament where you can affect everything else. Um, so I do actually agree with that first point. And I think it's I think it's actually true. I've said I've said it for a long time that I don't think that that should be allowed. All right. So I, I do agree with the first part, although I suspect there's stuff I'm not going to agree with pretty soon. OK. Um, and what now? The organizers have given a personal invitation to the guy they cooperate with, Daniil Dubov. 
Personally, I've got no issues with Daniil. The questions are exclusively to the organizers. Cooperation shouldn't influence the lineup of tournaments. That's not professional sport. If it keeps going like this, we will soon see Gigun in a world championship match. He'll shave off his eyebrows during a game. I don't know who Gigun or Gigun is. Uh, so someone can tell me who that is. Um, but uh, but is that is that some Russian some Russian like personality or something? It's a famous rapper. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Um, and there's also one more invitation. One touch chess player who hasn't played classical chess in two years. It's like a hockey player who didn't go out on the ice in two years, but played hockey online all the time. And still he's invited to play in the country's real team. Can you imagine such a situation in Russia or Canada? Of course not. Why is that possible in chess? Okay. This is very, very weird. Um, very weird because there's a big difference. First of all, you can't play hockey online. Secondly, to try and say that online chess where Magnus has dominated is not the same as over the board chess. It's just not really applicable. So I don't know what this, what exactly this analogy is, but it doesn't make any sense in any way, shape or form. Um, so it's just bizarre. I mean, cause basically if, if there, if she's going to take the, take the stance that online chess is different, then of course, Magnus should never have played online tournaments. Magnus of course should not have won those tournaments at all. And, um, and the, you know, like, why is it that Magnus is the strongest player over the board wins that win, wins the online tournaments too? If it's such a, you know, it's completely different. Nothing is the same. Um, very, very weird. Okay. Why don't the organizers give that invitation to someone who's young, to someone who's already shown his strength and beat Magnus? My personal opinion is that not inviting Andre Sapenko is a huge mistake by the organizers and Andre by his achievements will go on to prove that to the whole world. And he doesn't need hype for people to speak about him since he is already speaking about him. Okay, what do you think about the wild cards and world championship qualification system in general? Um, well, I don't even know what I don't even really know what to say to that. It, it's very, very strange. Um, very, very strange. Very strange. That's all I'm going to say. We have a tweet we want to cover as well, which is, I heard Sergey and Galia recently pitched keeping up with the Car Karyakins to NBC Universal. Apparently, they were rejected due to it being incredibly boring and riddled with terrible, incomprehensible. Bad takes. Okay. Um, <laughs> I know, I know, I know the scene is a little bit off you guys, but you still, you still got to love it. I mean, you, you just, you, you got to love it. Uh, really, really good. Really, really good. That's, um, that, that's, that's a great reply. Yeah. So, so anyway, um, I mean, what I would say about it is just, I don't understand it. It's very, very weird. Um, I don't know why Sergey, Sergey and his wife are seemingly trying to start drama. I mean, I, I don't know if it's the match went wrong or what it is, but it's very, very weird. Very, very weird to, to see this. And I, I just don't understand it at all. Um, I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's get ready.